What's going on guys, Bingo here, and today I wanted to profile you the Going Second Sky Striker deck that I played at this weekend sneak peek, the uh, Rising Rampage. So this is the new July 2019 ban list with one multi-roll and three Solemn Judgment. So the one multi-roll hurt this deck a lot, but I'm gonna, as I'm going through the profile, I'm gonna be explaining why or why not I will continue to play this deck and what changes I would make. Uh, it was four rounds and I did take first uh, because the Dual Factory wanted to lose his match so I didn't play him in the finals. But without further ado, let's get into the profile, starting with the main deck. Obviously, uh, three Sky Striker Ace Ray. So the problem with this deck post ban list is you lost a lot of consistency, not just with multi-roll and being able to set the cards, but you lost access to Ray because you lost one terraforming, which is one copy of Area Zero, and your consistent way to pop Area Zero to get to Ray. So you see this card a lot less, and it's it, it makes it a lot harder to play the deck than I first thought it would. Um, and then for hand traps, this is a going second list, so I'm playing three Ash. It's just, a, I mean, everyone said Ash for two years, so I don't have to explain it anymore. Uh, three Ogre. This card was surprisingly lackluster. I don't know if it was the matchups I was playing against because I played against Danger Thunder. Um, honestly, I forgot the other ones, but it just really never came up. I, these would probably be better off if they were Veilers, which I did side, and I most of the time I just swapped them out. So going forward, um, I need to play against more meta decks so to see if this is good, but as of right now, I don't really think it is, but maybe it'll make your uh, Danger Thunder deck or match up a lot better uh, and then I'm just gonna go with the hand traps the three impermanence and three evenly matched like I said this is going second uh, evenly matched was surprisingly uh, performed surprisingly well uh, I don't know if it's just because people don't know how to play around it game one or uh, my locals is full of people that don't really know the game that well but uh, surprisingly, this card was awesome. And if I do play a going second deck in the future, such as this, Invoked, or or not Invoked, uh, but Necroz, I'm probably going to continue to play this card because this format right now, it's really undefined, so it is performing very well. Uh, and then getting on to the spells, we have three copies of Mobilize Engage. Nothing's changed there. Um, honestly, if this card went to two and Widow Anchor went to two and we didn't lose multi-roll, uh, the deck would be significantly better. Uh, the one hit to multi-roll is extremely, extremely not good for the deck. Uh, three Widow Anchor, uh, three Area Zero. So like I said, you're really reliant on proccing this card to see Ray. Um, and without multi-roll, you have to find another way to do that, which you'll see later on in the deck profile. Three... Shark Cannon. Uh, this card is just good generic disruption. It does hurt a lot of decks in the current format. Uh, banishing Bay Links, banishing a target to be revived by something. It's just good generic disruption, and you need more Sky Striker cards that do something, that give you a body on board, because you're not going to be able to consistently set uh, Widow Anchors off your multi roll anymore, so you're not going to have that reliable form of link material through just repeated use of Widow Anchor. So, uh, and then we have one multi roll. Uh, I can complain about this all day, but I'm not going to. Uh, and then the rest of the one ofs we have one drones, as good as ever. Going second, I'm only playing one Eagle Booster. If I was playing a more control going first uh, uh, style of deck, I would definitely play two, uh, just so you can guarantee your sh first Shizuku or Kigari resolve more often. Um, and then one Afterburners, great generic removal. Uh, Jamming Waves actually performed extremely well because... This is one of the cards that you can proc area zero off of. This is one of the cards that just, it out, uh, it's really helpful going second because you can clear problem back row um, after, if they leave one set card after you uh, evenly them, it just, it just really helps you play through uh, game one scenarios. Uh, Hercules base, you are so reliant on this card that, that it honestly becomes a crutch because if you can't resolve this card, your grind game is just not there. Um, and then for the non Sky Striker cards, we're playing the Foolish Barrel Goods Engine, being two goods and one Metal Force Fusion. It's pretty standard at this point. I never did enjoy three copies of Foolish Barrel Goods uh, because if you open two of this card, it just feels really bad. Um, it's a great setup, but you don't have to see it every time. Um, this is a card that I'll probably bump up to three. Um, MST is 
it's good going second to clear problem cards, but it's also really good for activating your uh, your equip spell, I forget the name, and your field spell for summoning Ray. Because if you don't see Ray, you can't play. Like, I don't care. Like, you need ways to see Ray, and there's only so many searchers you can play. You can only play one Roto, one Terraforming, and you just struggle really hard in the grind game. Um, then for the one-off spells, one Rota, as always, one Terraforming, uh, one Upstart, and then we have one Mystic Mine and one Double or Nothing. So at least once a match, I fell back onto having to rely on Mystic Mine after my opponent set up and then just attacking directly with Hayate because I just didn't see enough um, either copies of Engage or I didn't hard open multi-roll. So... That's what the deck is so reliant on other pieces of uh, support that it it just can't stand on its own too much anymore. So it, it's really unfortunate. I don't think I'm gonna play this coming this format because it just loses to too many things. The double or nothing combo, I will not I will not play it again. Um, maybe if Salomon Great becomes more represented again, but there's just not enough targets for Shark Cannon to bring back the level four at least in my testing as well as the tournament itself. All right, on to the extra deck. One Kagari, unfortunately, feels bad. Uh, three Hayate. This card is honestly that one of the MVPs right now. Uh, without this card, you literally can't play over half the games. Uh, three Shizuku, standard. I opted for two Kaina. Um, I've considered three but if you are at the point where you need three, most of the time you're losing that game because you weren't able to resolve your Hercules base and you're just struggling to stay in the fight. Uh, for your generic links, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, and then we have one BLS. Uh, I wouldn't play this card again in Sky Striker. It's really good, but every time it came up, I'd rather make Unicorn or just keep climbing into like a Boral Sword or something. Uh, and then one Boral Sword Dragon, and then the Utopia Double and Utopia. Again, I wouldn't play this card again. Uh, it's it's just not reliant enough. Or it's two slots in your extra deck for a maybe, and I've never been a big fan of that. And then since it was the sneak peek, normally I don't do side decks for profiles, especially this new into a competitive season, but since it was for the tournament, I'll show you guys. Three Solemn Judgment for when I knew I was going first. This card saved multi-roll once, uh, but it also paid half my life, and then I just got killed. So if I was playing a going first version of this deck, I'd probably play two Judgment, two Strike or something to help protect that multi-roll, but I don't know. Uh, there can only be one. This card was extremely, extremely good against Orcist and Danger Thunder. It, the game state just ended up resolving down to Hayate attacking over and over again uh, because they just can't out this card most of the time. Uh, Pankertops put in a lot of work. It's as good as ever. And three Twin Twisters for generic back row removal. And then three Effect Failure. Nothing pretty crazy in the side. I just wanted to maintain, you know, last format's thought process, and it paid off pretty well. Some cards I would continue to think about is Lancia. This card is, I mean, I just knew I wasn't going to be playing too many Orcist or Danger Thunder, but I actually played both, so what do I know? Uh, and it, for the rest of the deck, cards I would consider playing is definitely B Cop of the Underworld, because um, if you can just make it with two links, uh, you contribute itself and protect your multi roll, uh, or not with two links, with like Ray and a Dark Monster. Summoned off Shark Cannon or Widow Anchor, so it's pretty good. And then I'm testing the Link Bound thing, but again, I just don't think this deck has enough power to stand on its own anymore. And then consider Daigusa Emerald to not be so reliant on the equip spell to shuffle back Kagari. But if you're ever in that game state, you're probably winning, so I don't know. But guys, if you have enjoyed this video, this has been my going second uh, Sky Striker deck profile for the July 2019 format. This is going up on my channel as well as the Dual Factory. Please check him out. He We like to theory a lot together. We also do a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast every Monday. It goes up on uh, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify at 8 a.m. on Mondays and YouTube at 10 a.m. Except his channel when I forget to upload it. But hey, I got stuff to do. <laughs> Peace out.